Good morning. My name is Joanne Conroy, and I'm the CEO of Leahy Hospital Medical Center. I want to thank you for coming to Burlington today. We're here to celebrate a tremendous achievement. And really, this is the culmination of the vision of the LHMC Board of Trustees, hundreds of donors that identified the need for this to occur, and institutional staff that with our trustees and donors continued to drive the vision for a new emergency room here at LHMC. Cost a little bit under $80 million, and you will realize what a beautiful facility it is when you're able to take a tour after our presentations. I hope you will be as amazed as I was the first time I walked through the emergency room and my subsequent amazement as I've watched its development and ultimate completion. We have a dedicated team of world-renowned physicians and clinicians who provide incredible care characterized by their clinical excellence and incomparable patient experience. I've been here for two and a half years, and through my travels at any number of medical centers across the US, I can tell you that the care here at Leahy is special. It's different. And it's only fitting that we actually renovate our front door, with the, which the emergency room is for many of our patients. It's been really satisfying to see this come from just a glimmer in the minds of the trustees to a hole in the ground and now to this state-of-the-art emergency room that will go along with our world-class care. Many of you may know that we are a level two trauma center and are the only level two trauma center between here and Manchester. So the patients that we receive here are not only people that have urgent issues that, that occur either at the workplace or at home, but we receive thousands of patients that are actually injured between work and home or while on vacation. And this is an incredible opportunity for us to actually bring the world-class expertise in neurosurgery, orthopedics, cardiovascular care, and of course, emergency medicine. When it opens on the 25th, this will be really a new environment for our providers. We've actually purchased Fitbits for all of the employees in the emergency room because one thing that they will realize is they're going to walk a lot more since they're moving from a facility that's only a quarter of the size of the new facility. Before we begin our speaking program, and we have a lot of wonderful people that will really um, give some kind of color to the vision that um, this emergency room is. Um, I'd like to acknowledge some of our public servants. We have Senator Jason Lewis. We have the Health Policy Commission Executive Director, David Seltz. We have the Health Policy Commission Deputy Executive Director, Colleen Elstermeyer. You might want to hold your applause because I've got about 20 more. <laughs> we have the Town Manager, Richard Reed from Bedford, which is where I live. We have our Bedford Fire Chief, David Grunes. We have the Billerica Deputy Police Chief, Roy Frost. We have the Burlington Town Administrator, John Petron. We have the Burlington Fire Chief, Stephen Yetman. We have the Burlington Police Chief, Mike Kent. We have the Burlington Deputy Police Chief, Thomas Duffy. We have the Burlington Police Captain, Greg Skehan. We have the Burlington Planning Board Chair, Barbara LaRue. We have the Burlington Planning Director, Kristen Kastner. We have the Burlington Planning Board Members, Carol Perna, Paul Raymond, and Ernie Covino. We have the Burlington Inspector of Buildings, John Clancy. We have the Lexington Assistant Fire Chief, Derek Senkaba. 
And we have the Wilmington Selectman, Judith O'Connell. So I want to thank you. for sharing the day with us. Um, of course, we have our governor, who will be the last speaker of the day. I want to introduce our first speaker, who's the chair of the Leahy Health Board of Trustees, Ann Ellen Hornage. Ann Ellen. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I love a good party. And this is a great party for a great purpose. Um, for the governor's benefit, he was wondering how many white coats we had in the audience. So everyone, white coats, raise your hand, whether or not you're wearing a white coat. <laughs> See, governor, they're here. They're just not all wearing white coats. Um, <laughs> they're hidden, that's right. Um, having you here makes it a really special day for us, so thank you for coming, governor. Um, as Joanne said, when we cut the ribbon, and I think starting on January 25th, the patients will start arriving through our front door. Many of them, as you know, having the worst, one of the worst days of their lives, coming into an emergency room, and they will be met and cared for by some of the world's foremost emergency medicine experts. Um, I have taken a tour of the emergency room. I hope all of you will stay and do that as well, who have not done that before. What struck me during the tour was not only the attention to detail about providing extraordinary high-quality medical care, but the attention to detail in providing dignity, comfort, privacy, and respect for the individual patient and their family, which is really a, a Leahy uh, trademark. An acute awareness that when people come through the door, we're not just treating their broken arms or their open wounds or their damaged hearts, but we're treating individuals who need the comfort of an extra thick cushion on the gurney uh, privacy for the family for conversation, a fast track for receiving care, a heated blanket, a warm touch. And that's what we're all about here today. So many people to acknowledge and thank. I want to start with Anne Marie Connolly, uh, the chair of the Leahy uh, Medical Center Board and her entire board uh, for providing the spark and the leadership that turned this vision into reality. Without them, we would not be here today, and all the donors um, who made this happen. I want to thank the facilities and operations team at LHMC uh, for, for also bringing this about, with a special shout out for Robbie Robertson, I see you over there, and for Mike Slazer, um, who actually brought this budget in ahead of schedule and under budget. When does that happen? <laughs> Um, I want to thank Dr. K Joe Corkery, or is somewhere out there whose name graces this facility fittingly because he is a brilliant physician and a wonderful role model. Um, and I want to uh, acknowledge Dr. Matt Creighton, the Chief of Emergency Medical Care, um, for his attention to detail um, and his loving work in traveling the world to bring back the best design ideas and um, helping us develop this extraordinary facility. I salute you, Captain, and your entire team. And for those of you, uh, the captain reference, for those of you who take the tour, you'll see that there's actually a captain's wheel in there. In the emergency. We may be the only emergency room in the world that has a captain's wheel, I'm not sure. Um, and last but certainly not least, so I've talked about people providing the heart, people providing the skill, people providing the wallets, people providing the spark. Who provided the muscle? Um, this guy over here who I'm going to introduce, uh, CEO of the Leahy Health System, Howard Grant. Um, this project has been on the drawing board for 10 years, 15 years? 20, possibly 20 years. It needed muscle. It needed somebody to push it, to pull it. Um, and to, to get the kick that we needed to make it happen, and it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Grant. I cannot believe that we are standing here today. Uh, Matt Creighton interviewed for a job at Leahy Clinic 27 years ago. 
28 years ago. Max said, well, the facility is a little shabby. They said, don't worry, next year construction starts. <laughs> Mac, um, it finally happened. Just like our beloved Cubs, it finally happened. So, um, Governor Baker, I'm thrilled that you're here with us today. Um, you probably know more about health care than any governor, certainly in the history of the Commonwealth, certainly any sitting governor in the United States today. There are times when I'm hoping that you'd be willing to take a part-time job in Washington and tend to the health system. You don't have free time to do that, Charlie? I kind of like the job I have. He likes the job he's got. Um, Governor Baker and I met several times before he embarked on his path to um, the gubernatorial campaign. And Charlie, you, you may remember this, you repeatedly told me that your recollection of Leahy during your time as CEO of Harvard Pilgrim was high quality, low cost, great value to the communities that we serve, great value to the people who participated in your health plan, and we take enormous pride in continuing that mission today. When I came here in 2010, I actually didn't focus much on the emergency department. In fact, in, in, in retrospect, they didn't tour me to the emergency room, probably because that might have been a problem. Um, I describe for people now um, world-class care, world-class medical and nursing staff, but a facility that's probably about a 1.2 on a 1 to 10, and we've migrated to close to a 10 on a one to 10, and of that we can be enormously proud. Um, a very generous benefactor whose name is on that list of donors to this emergency department met with me after I'd been here for about two weeks. Um, she was a very blunt elderly woman. Um, we had a delightful lunch together. We didn't talk any specifics. About 10 minutes after she left my office, there was a rap on the door. She stuck her head in. She didn't even walk into the office. And she said, I forgot to tell you, your emergency department is a disgrace. You really should do something about that. Um, I wish she were here today, but she knows the contribution that she made. When it opened, um, it was built to accommodate a maximum of about 15,000 patients per year. I think it achieved that rapidly, fairly rapidly, Mac, about the first six months. Today, we see over 40,000 patients for, for, per year. And for those of you who haven't been there, most of the staff can reach out and hold hands with all the rest of the staff. Most of the patients can hold hands with their adjacent patient, which is not ideal. And you'll see in the new facility that we have built um, comfort, security, um, when patients feel the most fragile, when they come to an emergency room, when families are the most anxious, they're entitled to be treated with dignity and respect and you'll see that this facility affords us an opportunity to do that. Um, just a word about the Leahy Health System. We are absolutely committed to delivering care to our communities in a responsible fashion. And by that I mean doing everything we can to keep patients close to home for their care. We've done that in our partnerships with Beverly, Winchester, and Addison Gilbert Hospitals. And at a time when community hospitals across the Commonwealth continue to see a shrinking population of patients staying close to home for care. The experience at Leahy has in fact been exactly the opposite. Our community hospitals have grown significantly. And in return, the complicated patients who can't be safely cared for in those settings have increasingly been referred to Leahy Hospital and Medical Center where we're delivering world-class care and closer to their homes. Um, as Ann Allen described, the new ED is mission critical for that system. Because we're taking care of so many more complicated patients from our system, we weren't able to do so in the old facility. And when January 25 arrives, and at 7 a.m. the patients walk through the door, um, we'll be in a whole new era of the Leahy Health System. Governor, I know one of your priorities for 2017 and beyond is providing um, responsible care for behavioral health patients. Um, we need to make sure that the governor sees the commitment that we've made to behavioral health patients in our new emergency department. Um, I commend Dr. Creighton and his colleagues in nursing and elsewhere um, for touring 40 different institutions across the country to see what the best looks like and trying to incorporate that into our new facility. And in the world of behavioral health, you will see that we've created a facility that will be able to treat those patients with the respect that they're entitled to. But it's not just about behavioral health. We're four times the size, as Ann Ellen mentioned. 
Um, we're going to be able to take care of many more patients in a prompt, expeditious fashion and be able to get them back to where they belong, close to their communities and their primary care physicians. Um, and then finally, let me echo what, um, what Ann Ellen said. The board chair of Leahy Hospital Medical Center, Ann Marie Connolly, um, for those of you who know her, if she's anything, she's determined. Um, this would not have happened without her determination and commitment to the organization. We raised substantially more money in support of this facility than is typically the case in other academic medical centers who end up having to finance the lion's share of the facility. And in fact, we've to date paid for more than six, about 65% of this facility through philanthropic donations, which is a huge achievement. Allow me to... Allow me to introduce to you the leader of that effort, Anne Marie Connolly, the chair of the Leahy Hospital Medical Center Board. Good afternoon. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our governor, Charlie Baker. We're delighted that you're here with us today to celebrate this important milestone in our history. As a resident of the North Shore and someone with deep roots in the healthcare community of Massachusetts, the governor understands the significance of this day for LHMC, its patients and the communities that we serve. What's particularly interesting about Governor Baker is his deep understanding of the healthcare industry in Massachusetts. As Chief Executive Officer of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare from 1999 to 2009, he led the company out of receivership to become the top health care plan in the country for member satisfaction and clinical effectiveness. During his tenure, Harvard Pilgrim was named one of Boston Business Journal's best places to work for seven years running. We're going to challenge that. So, Governor Baker, thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie, and uh, to all of you who are here today, the first thing I would say is congratulations. Um, one of the things that happens as you get older uh, is you actually get to watch history play out before your eyes. Um, I first started coming up to Leahy mostly for uh, business-related reasons when I was working in the Weldon Salucci administration back in the early 90s, which would be roughly 28, 30 years ago. Um, lots happened since then. One of the things that's been most interesting to me is to watch this facility <clears throat> morph over that period of time. Uh, the number of changes that have taken place here and the number of uh, new developments as both the financing world has changed, as the care delivery models have changed, as the relationships between providers and providers and providers and payers and providers and government have changed, um, has actually been, uh, in some respects, a, a pleasure to watch because this is an organization that understands and recognizes how important its traditions are but is perfectly capable of adapting to a changing marketplace, a changing context, a changing clinical world and a changing set of approaches to dealing with treatment and care. And, and Howard's comments about what I used to say about Leahy Clinic when I was at Harvard Pilgrim are exactly right. Um, on all the data and all the analysis we ever did, Leahy Clinic, Leahy Hospital and Medical Center was a very high value provider. Case mix adjusted costs that were absolutely among the lowest, among those who serve the most complex patients in Massachusetts and a very high quality provider. And I say that uh, as somebody who spent a lot of years looking at a lot of data in this space in a community that has a bunch of really terrific healthcare organizations. And for those of you who are here this morning who work with this institution and work for this institution, you should be enormously proud of the work that you do and the legacy that you've set and the bar that you've established here. Um, this is a terrific organization, a terrific institution. It's a big part of why I'm here. I also want to congratulate you for inviting so many folks in the local communities and especially those who represent the first responder community. They are obviously going to be among your biggest partners 
uh, here in this emergency room and have been your biggest partners for a long period of time. And I'm sure they're looking forward to the fact that the emergency room would be a little bigger than it was back in the day. Um, and I think in some ways Leahy's decision uh, to invest in this, and let's face it, when you look at this board and you think about how much of this was raised philanthropically, um, that's a huge statement about the faith that people have in this organization and the faith that people have in its history and the belief that people have in its future. Um, you know, it's not easy to raise money for an emergency room. And when you look at how much these folks have been able to put together to support this endeavor, it really does speak to that whole idea that results attract resources. I mean, great institutions, great organizations that do great work and have a track record that people can come to believe will translate into a future that builds on the success of the past usually have more success raising money than others. And this is a big statement about how people feel about this institution and the people who work here and the work that it does. And my final thought is how much this will mean, not just to the people who come in the front door, who obviously, as you point out, uh, are in the midst of some sort of horrible day uh, or continuing reoccurrence with respect to some illness that they've been dealing with, but for the family members and the friends who are usually part of that experience. Um, they will be able uh, to feel comfortable and confident that they are bringing their family member, their friend, their neighbor uh, to a place where they believe uh, they will receive the absolute very best that we have here in the Commonwealth to offer them. Um, I'm here because I think Leahy is a jewel and a treasure, not just to the Commonwealth of Mass and to the people who live and who are served by it, but to the country and to the healthcare world generally. You should all be enormously proud of what you've done, but you should also recognize that a big part of what made today possible is the legacy and the history of those who are here and came before you. And I look forward to a positive, terrific, spectacular, and continued excellent future for the folks here at Leahy and the people who are served by it. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor Baker, for those kind words. Now I'd like to invite Governor Baker, Senator Jason Lewis, Ann Ellen, Howard, Ann Marie, and Matt Creighton to help cut the ribbon and make this new ED a reality. And we have a ribbon right around the corner.